what are you gonna do? Okay, so I always get questions about how to become a zookeeper. So that's what this video is gonna be focused on. I'm trying to sit so that I'm actually angled good at the camera. Okay, so point blank, becoming a zookeeper is not easy. A lot of zoos now, like, that job is in high demand. A lot of people want to be zookeepers. And so basically, they can pay whatever they want and require as many requirements as they want to weed out candidates. Most zookeeping, or pretty all, but most zookeeping positions don't pay very much. I personally live paycheck to paycheck and have to seriously budget my money um, in order to not go broke. The last couple of weeks, I've actually had to borrow money from my parents because I do have a neurologic issue that is really bad with, it's very weather dependent and with the changing seasons and all of the rain we've been having, it's been abnormally bad and I've been missing a couple days of work here and there and I don't have pay time off yet um, because I haven't been there for six months. So my last paycheck, literally the whole thing had to go towards my rent. After that, I was left with about $20 and I need about $40 per paycheck for gas because I live half an hour away from the zoo. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of how much I make. Um, so I'm technically not a zookeeper. I am a zoo educator. However, I got this position because I interviewed and made it to the end for a zookeeper position. And I actually got offered a zookeeper position at another zoo, like practically right off the bat. Um, so I feel like I can talk about this video because I've gone through the process. I've done interviews. I've been offered jobs. I've been super close to getting jobs. And now I technically work at the zoo in the education department. So not the keeper department, but the education department. Um, and I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of keeper work just because they know that's what I wanna do. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a little bit more with the education reptiles. So I don't think I've announced that yet. So woohoo, super awesome news. Um, the director of the zoo talked to me cause she talked to the head keepers and they agreed to let me help out with the reptiles down in the education department so that I can kind of get my zookeeper fill um, and they can still keep me as an educator. So yeah, anyway, the zoos don't pay much and because it's in such high demand, they can require a two or four year degree, which most zoos do, especially AZA accredited zoos. Now, when you are going to work for a zoo, it looks really good if you work for an AZA accredited zoo because those zoos are the ones that have to meet all of these standards and get inspected and whatnot. Now, not all AZA zoos are fantastic and not all non-AZA zoos are bad. A lot of zoos aren't AZA because becoming AZA accredited is very expensive. Um, there's a local wild center here that isn't AZA accredited because of the cost. They just don't get enough business to justify the cost when they could be using all that money towards their animals. So just because somewhere isn't AZA accredited doesn't mean that they are bad. So you really have to research the facilities and talk to people that know those facilities to kind of get an idea. So two or four year degree, most of them require that. Um, now I'm not saying it's not possible to get a keeper position without a degree, but it's gonna be much harder. Now I will say the most important thing when you are trying to get a keeper job is experience. I've seen people get keeper jobs because of their experience, not because they went to school, but because they have experience in zoos with all these different animals. Um, there's a reptile keeper I know at the zoo I interned at that got the position because he was a breeder. He did expos. Him and his buddy owned a reptile shop so because he had that experience, he was able to get that job. Now he also had a two year degree and he was transferring to my college to finish that and get a four year degree, but they hired him because of his experience. So he didn't have to finish. He didn't have to go two more years in debt. Now I went to a very expensive school because it was one of the number one schools 
in the country for this kind of program or focus. Um, I did major in animal behavior, ecology, and conservation. So you can pretty much do anything in the animal field with that major. Um, their professors are amazing. There's a lot of options, a lot of minors to go with it. So I did minor in zoo biology. Um, so it's a very expensive school, but it was a very good school and the program was amazing. And a lot of people all over the country know about that program and that school. So that is why I chose to go there. So I am extremely in debt and living paycheck to paycheck. And that's just the reality of becoming a zookeeper. So most people become zookeepers because of their love for animals. They don't care about the money. So if you're one of those people and you still, despite everything I've said so far, want to be a zookeeper, then we'll keep going. So I'm going to talk to you guys about my college education. So I already told you my degree, um, four years. I took lots of different classes. There was a lot of required ones, including statistics, which was awful. Absolutely awful. Um, but I had a lot of fun classes too. Um, I took zoo exhibitry three, three times. Um, and that was when during a school break, we would hop on a bus and we would go to a bunch of different zoos and aquariums. And we would fill out this, these paper, or this paperwork. Um, one sheet we'd fill out was us judging the zoo from a guest perspective and the other one was us judging the zoo from an ABEC perspective. ABEC is short for my major, Animal Behavior, Ecology, and Conservation. It's a very long major, so we say ABEC. Um, so then we was judging it from an ABEC perspective. And then we would look at the exhibit designs and the exhibits, what we thought was good, what we thought could be better. And at the end of the semester, we would do a group project where we picked an exhibit from one of the zoos and we would redo it and make it better. So that was really fun. Um, I got to see a lot of zoos. I've been to over, lost my calendar, I think it was over 40 zoos in my lifetime. And a lot of them were because of those trips that I did. So the last thing I did, we went to all of the New York City zoos. That's something I would never do on my own. So it was a really good experience. Um, I've also gone to all of the Ohio zoos. No, that was the last one. The last one's all the Ohio zoos. The one before that was all the New York City zoos. Um, so they're just, they're so much fun. That was one of those really fun classes. Um, I took animal nutrition, um, so I found out that I really have an interest in animal nutrition. That actually started with Arcadius my iguana. Because of his metabolic bone disease, I had to, I learned a lot about nutrition, or um, like reptile nutrition, and it was very interesting, so I actually really loved that class. Um, obviously biology, I hate biology, but I had to do it. Um, what else did I take? Zoo animal husbandry. That was another fun one. It was once a week and we would meet at the zoo and the zoo director actually taught it. And each week a head keeper from the different departments would come in and talk to us. A lot of the times we got to go behind the scenes. So that was really cool. Uh, I took animal enrichment. And so obviously we learned about enriching animals and we did a group project where we were assigned animals at the zoo and we had to create an enrichment item for them. So my group being overachievers picked sea lions. <laughs> So that was quite the adventure, making an enrichment item for them. Um, the last semester I took primatology. That was because I had to, not because I wanted to. Personally, I'm not a big primate person, but I needed an advanced writing course and that counted towards my major and advanced writing and it allowed me to graduate a semester early, so I took it. <laughs> Um, I took conservation education, which definitely helped me get this job. Um, we learned about education and then for the lab portion, we partnered with local elementary schools. And so once a week for the lab, our groups would go in and we'd be assigned a group of kids, a group of fourth graders, and we had to prepare lesson plans and activities for them and kind of teach them. Um, so it had to do with like the local ecosystems, their local garden, um, conservation, stuff like that. So that was actually really fun. Um, we had a good group. Um, I also took zoo animal management. So we talked about all the different career options inside of a zoo, what they all do. Um, in a group, we had to create our own zoo and create a newsletter. So I was in charge of creating the newsletter um, by default because I also majored in digital media art. So graphic design was my specialty. So by default, I created the newsletter, but that was really fun. 
Um, and it was cool. We got to learn about all the different things that go on in a zoo, like Zims and how they pick species or pick animals from different zoos to pair them up for a species survival program. Um, that was actually really difficult. So kudos to people that can that do that. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of career options inside of a zoo besides being a zookeeper that a lot of people don't think about, like being an educator, um, being one of those people that goes through the system and looks at all of the animals like genetics and family history and pairs them together for the species survival program. Sussex College gave me a lot of knowledge and education to take with me for the rest of my life. Um, so picking a college. This is a question I get a lot is how to find a college with a good program. If you go to the AAZK website, the American Association of Zookeepers, if you go to their website, they have a section about colleges and it lists all of the two year and four year degrees in the US with college with like programs focused around becoming a zookeeper. And I'll give you a description of each one, the location, and so it's very, very helpful. So that gives you a starting point. So you can see what kind of like what your options are, what colleges offer, what you would need to be a zookeeper. So I will link that website in the description below so you can go check it out. Um, they also list job listings and everything. So that's a really good site to check out for someone wanting to get into zookeeping. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk to you guys about internships. So these are even more important than the college education because this is where you're getting experience and you can have all of the education in the world but unless you have hands-on experience a zoo probably will not give you priority over someone that has done internships or volunteered so get as many experiences as you can whether it's internships or volunteering do what you can to give yourself that edge up so in my last two years of college, I did four internships. Um, I wish I had started doing them earlier. Unfortunately, my program didn't really start talking to people about them until you were in your junior year. Um, so had I really learned about internships earlier, I would have gone out and done them on my own right off the bat starting in freshman year or sophomore year. Um, but junior year, the end of junior year, my very first internship, I was a sea lion and otter intern. So I worked with sea lions and otters. That was my very first internship. And I was actually told that that department, that internship, was actually one of the hardest ones at the zoo. I loved it. I had a great time. I learned a lot. I didn't think it was hard. Um, but I guess like the key is to having, just having common sense and doing what you're told and doing it well and wanting to learn um, those particular keepers if you could prove that you want to learn and you want to be there then they would reciprocate and they would teach you and give you opportunities so it's kind of like a two-way street you put in the work and show you want to be there and they will make it worth your time so I worked with sea lions and otters but that was a cool one too because sea lions and otters fell under the same um, area as polar bears, lynx, and arctic fox, and because they didn't have an intern on the days that I was there, I got to help with the polar bears a lot, and it was amazing. Um, so definitely the best part of that internship for me was getting to help with the polar bears and getting opportunities to feed the sea lions. That was amazing. It was by far my favorite internship out of all of them. Um, it was the one that I felt like I learned the most from and that I got to be the most hands-on with. And I just felt like that was the most beneficial internship for me. Um, my second internship was the summer after junior year. I was a life support systems intern. Um, if you don't know what life support systems is, that is like all of the water quality and filtration systems that a zoo needs to function. <laughs> so a lot of people don't have experience in that and that's why I wanted to do it. I felt like that would separate me from a lot of other people if I had that knowledge of those systems. Now that was, I enjoyed it because it was challenging. The sea lion otter internship, animal husbandry, that comes really easy to me and I didn't find it challenging. Life support systems was freaking hard. 
there are so many valves and so many steps that you have to take in a certain order and a certain knowledge of chemistry which I don't have I took chemistry my freshman year of high school and that was it I don't know anything about chemistry anymore <laughs> so it was really difficult which I enjoyed I like a challenge I don't like things to be too easy for me but it was like it was really hard like now that I've done it I wouldn't pursue a career in life support but I still feel like it was really beneficial for me to have that experience and that time doing it um, because now it'll be easier for me in the future if I'm working with an animal and have to learn their system I'll already have like the basic knowledge of how it works it'll be easier for me to learn to pick it up and figure out how it works and um, what I need to do so that was my second internship um, my third one I actually did my third and fourth at the same time so the fall semester of my no yes the fall semester of my senior year because I graduated a semester early so I graduated in December um, the fall semester I three days a week went out to the aquarium and interned in their fib departments so of fish and vertebrates and birds and by birds I mean penguins so I interned in there three days a week um, and then on Saturday mornings I interned with the reptiles at my local zoo um, now that wasn't quite as beneficial as I wanted for a reptile internship unfortunately the zoo was renovating their reptile house so they weren't really doing reptile internships um, but they were keeping some of the reptiles off zoo grounds in a spare like lab office area on my college campus so they were taking one intern to help um, so luckily the professor that was kind of helping set that up was a professor that I worked for and he knew that I wanted more than anything to be a herb keeper so that internship would benefit me greatly so he talked to them and I ended up being the student that I got to help so Saturday mornings I'd go in and help unfortunately the only animals they really had over there were turtles, frogs, and hellbenders. So, um, needless to say, I became very turtled out. Turtles aren't really my favorite reptiles. I don't, I wouldn't pursue a career with them necessarily. Like, I want to be a herb keeper, but like, too many turtles. Eh. Like, I don't own a turtle. The only turtle I really like is a snapping turtle. So, I got turtled out very quickly and then of course went to the nature center and they only had turtles so I'm really over turtles <laughs> but um yeah so anyway I did a lot with turtles and I got to feed the hellbenders a couple times that was really cool um it was honestly kind of scary because they're like little vacuum cleaners um and I got to feed the milk frogs and take care of the milk frogs a lot that's why milk frogs are my favorite frogs because of that internship they are so awesome, they're so pretty, and I just really like them. So I did that. Um, the aquarium internship, uh, it didn't benefit me too much. It was something I could put on my resume, but I didn't really feel like I got too much out of it. That was one of those internships where you're more just doing the crappy work so that the keepers or the aquarists can do all of the more legitimate stuff. So instead of like shattering them and learning and doing that stuff, you're just doing the basics so they don't have to. Which to a certain degree as an intern you do have to do. You're supposed to make the keeper's life easier, but you're also there to learn the job. And I feel like I didn't. So that internship wasn't the greatest. But it was something I could put on my resume. I learned a lot about water quality. So after life support internship, then I went to the aquarium and did a lot of water quality because the girl that I really like to work with was always stuck in water quality so I learned a lot of water quality so those were the internships I did um, and then I mentioned volunteering is also really good so I volunteered um, for the last semester of my college education at our local SPCA because they did get um, reptiles in a lot and originally I messaged them about being a foster home um, but because I was in college and I was renting an apartment uh, I wasn't really the best candidate for that, but they passed along my information to the wildlife enrichment coordinator or whatever his title is, and he reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in being a 
reptile enrichment volunteer. <laughs> so that was kind of my title. I was the reptile enrichment volunteer um, on the wildlife, or not the wildlife, the exotic enrichment team. So other people did enrich the reptiles, but I was there to only enrich the reptiles. I wasn't there to do the rabbits or the ferrets or the birds that came in. I was strictly reptiles and I loved it. So I volunteered there so I could put that on my resume as well. Um, so just any experience you can get is amazing. Experience is going to help you. Um, so then you guys know I graduated early and I moved home for a while because we had a family cruise planned in February and I had skating competitions and an ice show and I didn't want to have to give that up yet. So I decided I would move back home and live here in my parents' house until after the cruise. After the cruise, then I would start seriously looking for jobs. Um, so while I was here, I actually had to get a job and I wanted something that was within my degree. So I reached out to the local nature center. So you guys know, I was a naturalist at my nature center for about six months. Um, and if you want to kind of see what I did as a naturalist, I will put a link in the description for the video I did. I did a day in the life of a naturalist. So I brought you guys to work with me. Um, so I did that for a while. So that was another really good thing to put on my resume that really kind of got me my job now as a zoo educator because a lot of what I did at the nature center was education based. And so that was pretty much what guaranteed me this job. So that was all of my like experience that I was able to put on my resume that helped me. Um, so yes, having a four year degree definitely sets me apart from the competition, but also having experience shows that I've done a lot and that I can handle doing a lot. And then of course, then you have your references. So you want references that can um, like definitely talk you up and tell your future employer just how good you are. So I used quite a few of the keepers that I've interned with. Um, I used the director for the nature center because it's always really impressive when you have someone that you can refer that has a title director. So that was extremely helpful. Um, having her kind of backing me up and she's awesome. So she was great. Um, so you definitely want to put all that experience on your resume. Definitely plan out who you're going to have for references. That's going to make you look good. Um, I also used the head of the ABEC department at my school. She was the professor I was closest to and that knew me well. Um, so I used her. So that looked really good for me too. And then the most important thing to keep in mind when you're applying for zoo jobs is it is very hard to get a keeper job. It's even harder to get your first keeper job. So you really can't be too picky when you're looking for your first job. Now, I was very fortunate that I could be a little picky because I lived here at home, rent free, working at the nature center, making pretty good money at the nature center because it was technically in a state park. Um, so I could save up money while I looked for a zoo job. Um, so I had the opportunity to be a little picky. Um, I only applied to zoos in my state, mainly because I was trying to stay close to home um, just because I wanted to be, I wanted to be like a day's drive, not a day's drive, but I wanted to be easily able to come home and visit and skate and come home for holidays. Um, so I didn't want to be too far, but also because I knew my boyfriend liked New York or ex-boyfriend liked New York. Um, so for really, I just waited for the zoos here to be putting out um, employment opportunities. So I did apply for one, two, three, four. I applied for four positions. Um, I got denied one. I never heard back from another. That one that turned me down didn't respond to me for like months. And then they emailed me and said, you know, we filled the position. Like we didn't want to interview you or something, but um, that one I knew would be a hard sell. It was for small mammals, so like meerkats, which is why I applied for because I love meerkats, they're my favorite animal. Um, but that was one where I could easily be beat out by someone that had keeper experience. So it's really hard as someone that's never had a zoo job to beat someone that has worked in multiple facilities. So that one I knew was a long shot. Um, I applied for a keeper position at the zoo that's actually closest to here. It's only two hours away. 
and it's more of a state park so it's still like a zoo um, but it's only native animals which isn't really something that I enjoy I want things that are a little more exotic um, but I interviewed for that position and the next day was offered the job um, but unfortunately I turned it down for the other zoo that's closest which is three hours away which is where I am now I applied for an apprenticeship position there so it's like a step down from a keeper you're like a paid intern technically um, but kind of working as a keeper and it was a year term with the op or with the opportunity of becoming a full-blown keeper at the end of that year so it's a really good way for people starting out with their first keeper position is applying for apprenticeship positions you don't see them too often but it's a really good starting point for getting your first job so i applied for that and during the interview process which i didn't realize they actually did away with the apprenticeship position and decided to just bring on a zookeeper um, so i think that's kind of where i lost out because i made it to the first interview i made it to the second interview and for the second interview or no after the first interview she wanted to narrow it down to two or three people for the second interview so i made it to the second interview uh, i sent in my references and then i ended up not getting the position um so i was i was close at least which is pretty good for the first interview i actually ever had um as for a keeper position so that was kind of a boost of confidence but i ended up not getting it um but the next <laughs> but the next day or two um the director of education reached out to me and said they wanted to interview me for the education department instead. And I think a lot of that was due to the fact that I worked at the nature center and a lot of it was education based. I did reptile education programs. So everything I do right now at the zoo were all things I did at the nature center. So that kind of made me look better suited for education. So I honestly think part of the reason I didn't get the keeper job was because they were short staffed in education and thought that would be a good fit. Um, but I also think that because they did away with the apprenticeship position and were looking for a full blown keeper, they wanted someone that had a little more experience than I did. And I think the people that they brought in had more experience than I did, where I have a lot more education experience, not only from school and the nature center, but I've also been a skating coach for a decade. So I have a lot of education experience. So like I said, you can't be too picky with your first zoo job. So I did accept it. Um, the zoo is only three hours away from my home. So it's an easy trip to make on my days off. Um, and nobody really stays at one zoo their whole life. Any keeper you ask, they'll probably tell you about all the zoos that they've worked at. Um, so it's just a stepping stone to build your resume, to build your career. So I did accept it. Um, we'll see where it takes me. Like I said, I'm gonna start doing more husbandry things with the animals. So that will be really good to add to my resume and kind of build me up. And then we'll see where I go from there. But yeah, that's really all there is to it to becoming a zookeeper is just getting experience under your belt and the degree really helps. So definitely look at the zoos that you think you'd want to work at, look at their job requirements and see if they require a degree. A lot of people are getting away with a two-year degree because of their experience so like had I known what I know now I probably wouldn't have put myself four years in debt I probably would have gone somewhere and done a two-year degree and only be two years in debt um, because now I know experience is the most important thing so I could have done a two-year degree and gotten all the experience in the world and been just as good off with less debt so definitely look at the places you think you might want to work and look at the colleges you might want to go to um, and just look at all the programs, look at the classes that they offer, see what really interests you, but just keep in mind that experience is the most important thing to becoming a zookeeper and to giving you that edge up. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it to becoming a zookeeper. I wish that I had had someone to talk to about it when I was going through the process, um, but I didn't. So that's why I wanted to make this video because I get a lot of messages asking about the process and how to do it. So I wanted to make a video just so I could refer everyone to this, um, what I did to become a zookeeper, what you need to do to become a zookeeper, 
what the reality is of becoming a zookeeper. Um, so that's why I want to make this video. So thank you guys for watching. Again, I'll put the AAZK link in the description below so you guys can check out all the college options. And I will put the link to my nature center job in the description below as well. Um, and I actually did a video a while ago about my internships and classes that I've done. So I'll link that below too because I talked a little more in depth about them, I think. So I will link that below too if you guys want to check that out. It's an old video, so keep that in mind. It was towards the beginning of my YouTube career, so I wasn't the most comfortable yet making videos and being on camera. Um, so it's a little, a little painful for me to go back and watch, but it was good information. I talked in depth about the classes I took, so I will link that too below. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you for the next video.